Hi, Dr. Windish from Sparks Pediatric and Adolescent Medicine. Welcome to our video series for students. Um, this is us. Please remember, if we can be of assistance for you here, give us a call at our phone number right here. Uh, we'll be happy to see you in our office for clinical rotations. Uh, if we don't already have an affiliation with your school, we can arrange that. Um, if you are a parent watching this video, please remember we can't really help you or your child over the internet. That's just not good medical care and not something we're in a position to do. Uh, but if you're having concerns, give us a call. We'd be happy to see your child in our office at this phone number. <coughs> Today, what we want to talk about is some molecular genetics and clinical genetic studies. And we want to look at fluorescent in situ hybridization or fish probes. And these are tests that are done very regularly in clinical genetics, and they're something we deal with a lot. So what is a fish probe? Well, you're either dealing with DNA, at which point you have two strands, or you're dealing with a single strand of RNA. Okay, And um, it depends on what, what you're, you're looking at. Um, as to whether you're dealing with one or the other. If you start with a single strand of RNA, you first have to reverse transcribe it. And when you reverse transcribe it, you're going to get yourself two strands of DNA. The sense strand and the antisense strand. <coughs> And before all the molecular biologists who are out there watching this jump in, remember that this video is intended for physicians and med students who don't have any background in molecular biology. So yes, we're going to be just a little um, elementary here. In your sense strand, that really is just the positive strand. Sometimes the sense strand is referred to as plus, and the antisense strand as the minus strand. All right, and remember your base pairs. So you might have something like adenine, thymine, adenine, adenine, adenine. Cytosine, 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 adenine, guanine, just for, just for uh, drill here. OK, that's on the sense strand. On the antisense strand, you'll have the reverse. So you'll have thiamine, adenine, thiamine, 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 guanine, 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 thymine, cytosine. OK? So what you do in a fish probe, um, this can be coupled with PCR if you need to. OK, so depending on what kind of a test you're doing, a lot of times you'll start and you'll actually use PCR. OK, and that'll amplify that. So you know you only took one cell out of Johnny's body uh, or a couple of cells from a swab in the, the cheek. And then you're going to PCR it so that you have 1,000, 10,000, million copies that you can work on. And it's much easier to light stuff up. OK. What you're going to do, going back up here, is we're going to peel these two strands apart. Oops, come on. Ah. in the area where we want to look at them, OK, where the area that we're going to test. Because of course, you know, your chromosome, uh, if we're looking at, let's say, chromosome 15, oops,
You know, or you could be looking at chromosome 2 or chromosome 23. I mean, you know, it's up to you what chromosome you're looking at. But this chromosome may be, you know, 10 million base pairs. All right, but we're interested in just a tiny region, maybe 100 base pairs, maybe 20 base pairs, depending on what kind of research we're doing or whether we're looking at a clinical patient. So we're going to take this chromosome, we're going to peel it apart part way. We're going to peel it apart in the region that we want to look at. So we're not necessarily going to peel the entire chromosome apart, but we want to look at just this region right here. So we peel it apart, and then what we're looking for is a given defect. Okay, so again, when we come down here, what we're going to see is, um, let's see if I can get that color right. No. A T A as the strands start to come together, A, A, C, 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 A, G. And then on the flip side, your antisense chromosome. You're going to see, oops, T, A, T, 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 G. Oops. C. Okay. So we peel it apart, and again, this is the region we're going to be probing. And what we want to know, we don't really know what the chromosome or what the um, base pair sequence here is. We're looking for a mutation. So depending on the test, we can then come in and probe this area with an antisense normal probe. Or if I'm looking for a specific G defect, let's say I'm looking for the common defect for cystic fibrosis, um, which is a defect in the cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulating protein, CFTR, and we're looking for the common, nope, not W, we're looking for the common defect, which is known as delta F508, which is a change on a phenylalanine at the 508 position. So we're going to come in and look at a couple of base pairs on either side of 508 position as well as the 508 position. And we're just going to look with the known probe for that, that defect. And so we're going to probe and say, you know, G. Do, does this patient have the following the following genetic mutation? Do they have C, 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 G, A? And so we're going to mix in this antisense strand that then is marked with a fluorescent marker. So we're going to essentially mix it together, heat it up, uh, wash it off, and then look and see if this thing's going to light up under fluorescent light. If it lights up under fluorescent light, then that tells me this strand here, the plus strand, needs to be the an needs to be the sense strand to go with this anti-sense probe. In the case of this particular uh, genetic makeup here, this strand won't stick; it'll wash off, and so this strand wouldn't light up. And so we would say, gee, that's a negative fish probe, OK? Or we're looking for, if we're looking for the, the mutation ATAAA, I'm going to probe with a probe strand that's going to look like this, T, A, T, 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 and 
guess what? This one will stick, and when we light this up, it'll fluoresce at us. This would be a positive test for that mutation. So what kinds of diseases do we do this for? Well, the list is huge. In the field of pediatrics, which is my field, and as such the field that I'm most interested in, um, we're looking at things like DeGeorge, or we're looking at, and that's a DI, uh, Angelman syndrome, or Prater Willi. Or, uh, I mean, the list just goes on and on. Miller Deeker. Or, um, we may look at, um, we can actually probe not specific diseases, but actually regions of genes or regions of chromosomes. So we may probe the uh, subtelomeric region. Um, or an easy way to identify chromosome numbers is to actually, you know, knows this chromosome 2 you're looking at, does this patient have a copy of chromosome 2? Instead of doing a karyotype where you actually count the chromosomes, you can probe for, sorry, not an S, you can probe the telomeric region of a given chromosome. So of chromosome 15, or of chromosome 3, or chromosome 12, or chromosome X, and see, does this patient have one copy, two copy, 47 copies? And you go, gee, why would you have 47 copies? Well, when you're dealing with certain tumors and you're doing fish probes, you're looking for ploidity, and that's a way of doing that. Um, in general pediatrics, that's not something we do a lot, but in hemonc, it is. Um, you know, and this is just to name a few. So fish probes we use all the time. And these are some common probes that we order. Uh, and this is the way it works. Okay, it's done in situ. You can actually have uh, the cells intact. And you're actually going to look under a microscope and what you'll see when you do that fluorescent in situ hybridization is, you know, maybe if we're, if we're doing like ploidity studies, you might see a number of cells that light up, and each of these will uh, be contained within a cell. And then you'll see a cell that lights up three times in the half. And that's not a, uh, a sad face, that's three times. And that tells you this is a triploid cell. If I'm doing a fish probe for, let's say, telomere, tel telomeric region of chromosome 8, that would tell me this cell, this patient is a mosaic, and this cell has one copy of chromosome 8, or better yet, you should have two copies. So you should be diploid for chromosome 8, diploid for chromosome 8, diploid for chromosome 8, triploid for chromosome 8, and so this patient is a 1 uh, to 3 um, mosaicism for triploidity of chromosome 8. Okay, or maybe we're looking for normal copies, or we're looking for copies of delta F508, and so what we're going to see is... something that looks like this. Okay, so we probe for delta F508 in, and they'll actually use different color probes, so we can do multiple probes at the same time. So we probe for delta F508, and then maybe we probed for um, another mutation, and there's another mutation which is something to the effect of X507. Don't quote me on this particular defect. 
actual name, but we're going to probe in this color and look. Okay, this patient is not homozygous for delta F508. This patient is homozygous for F508 and homozygous for X507, but this patient has two gene defect known in the CFTR region. This patient has cystic fibrosis. Okay, or maybe we will um, probe that patient and what we'll get instead color here um, will be this, and this patient is homozygous for delta F508. Of course, what you're hoping for is that you'll probe that patient, and what you'll see, and, and they don't do one probe. If, uh, in a lab, we might, in a, a research lab, we might, but in a clinical lab, we'll be probing patients, and we'll use anywhere from 35 to 100 probes, depending on the test that was ordered. Uh, but what you're hoping for is you're going to probe the patient, you're going to see cells that look like this. Nothing lights up. So you have no known defects. That doesn't mean there's no mutation. It means there's no known mutation or no searched for mutation found. So none of the common mutations. And then based off of the known statistics as far as how often and how common we see these mutations the lab will be able to tell you that means you have a 95 or a 99 percent chance of not having cystic fibrosis so that's what a fish probe is and how it works i have a student standing beside me who had asked this question so my question to my student in the background does that answer your question okay maybe a little bit more than you wanted to know so um that is fish probes and how they're done. Again, we order them all the time. I just ordered fish probes today on a patient for certain things. And I probably order various fish probes 10 to 15 times a year, which isn't a ton. But when you consider I'm a general pediatrician and not a geneticist, that's a fair amount of fish probing going on. Um, again, this is us at Sparks Pediatric and Adolescent Medicine. I hope this has answered your questions. And if we can be of assistance, give us a call. We'd be happy to see you here uh, for a rotation or see your child here in our office.